today I'll be speaking about Angular 2.0 uh, versus Aurelia, just two frameworks out of the community. Let me first introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I've been working for Zibia for three years now. I have a background in uh, internet development. I like all things web de development. So before joining Zibia, I wrote two books, one on Google App Engine, one on jQuery. Back in the days, the jQuery was still a cool framework. Um, since joining ZBI, I've been doing a lot around continuous delivery and DevOps, and that's yet another book. Uh, four months ago, I moved to India. I joined ZBI in India as a, a CTO. And as a CTO, I'm concerned where the market is going. A lot of our customers are heavily invested in Angular, Angular 1 specifically. And as a CTO, I need to give them advice on where to uh, continue uh, in which, which direction to go. Should they stay on Angular? Should they move away? Or new customers, new projects, uh, like we also saw in the Lightning talk yesterday. Should we start with Angular 1 or should we start in a different direction? So if we look a little bit at a timeline to place things in perspective and see what is happening in the community, uh, if we go back into ancient history when Angular was first started, we go back all the way to 2009. Um, 28 September 2009, there was the very initial Angular announcement. A little bit earlier than many people uh, are aware of, because Angular only a couple of years later started becoming more well-known and popular. Um, you have to keep in mind that this is 2009. 2009, like I said, a uh, long time ago was also the time that we were dealing with different kind of problems like uh, compatibility with old Internet Explorer versions, a thing that's becoming less and less of a problem nowadays. Uh, so mm, skip ahead through three years, 2012, the first uh, version of Angular was, was released, so a little bit later. If we skip ahead even further, early 2014, there was already, uh, were already developments on Angular uh, 2.0, but not really visible and public yet. Uh, this guy called Rob Eisenberg joined the Angular 2.0 uh, team. And why it's important will be later in history. Rob Eisenberg was originally the creator of a framework called Durandal. And Durandal used to be a framework based on the knockout framework. Uh, yeah, knockout framework. My, my personal experience with Knockout haven't been great, um, but that's set aside. Um, in October, Angular 2.0 got a lot of attention in the community because it was publicly announced. And with the announcement, people saw that it's actually not that much an upgrade of Angular, but it seems much more like a full new framework. In this announcement, it was also said by Google that Angular was going to be written in a language called AdScript. And AdScript is a uh, superset, an extension of TypeScript, where you could create annotations. So th th this is like, also, in the first announcement, there was no clear migration path from Angular 1 to Angular 2. So that, that also made a lot of fuzz in the community. And then I'm not even talking about the question whether people actually want to transition from Angular 1 to Angular 2 because Angular 2 is so much different. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people don't know yet what the framework is. I hope I can shed some light on it. Just one month later, there's the announcement that Rob Eisenberg, not very well known yet back then, but he leaves the Angular 2 project. Why? He said that um, initially he joined the Angular project because the direction he wanted to take for the next version of Durandal was so similar to the direction that Angular team wanted to take for the Angular 2.0 project that he thought, let's join forces. But over the year that he's been in the Angular 2 project, he saw actually that the direction of Angular 2 started to go in a different direction than he signed up for. And he said, this I didn't sign up for, so he left the project to just two months later announce a new framework called Aurelia, in which the initial ideas that he had for his um, next version of Durandal are put in this framework. Uh, and then one more thing that created some of the fuzz in the community is that in March, uh, Angular 2.0 switches to TypeScript because after some talks between Google and Microsoft, it turned out that the new features of AdScript, mainly being annotations, could also be incorporated in a next version of TypeScript. So this is interesting. We have Google working in a programming language which is actually created by Microsoft. And they're not working in Dart. 
interesting things are happening. It's, it's actually also a good thing because it means that companies are working together in the same direction. So why upgrade? L like I said, Angular initial version has been a long time ago. Um, a lot of stuff is in Angular to take care of all their browser, browser versions, things that don't always help uh, performance. Uh, also, if you were yesterday in the session of Magesh, uh, there was a lot of things happening like dirty checking. Uh, with newer browsers coming up, you have, which was mentioned by, I need to pronounce his name uh, correctly, uh, Charanjit Singh. He Sing. mentioned about observable.observe, which, which allows you to do the same thing as um, dirty checking, but done in a much more performant manner. Angular grew over time, so the, the number of concepts in Angular grew over time, making Angular a relatively complex framework. So another goal is to simplify. Then there's the changing webs. I already mentioned observable.observe. You have other developments like uh, Shadow DOM, web components, web templates, um, ECMAScript 6 coming up, and uh, other versions. Uh, and mobile support. Uh, since 2009, we need a lot more mobile, so there you need to be lightweight and performant. So everything I'm going to talk about today, we are, I have to give this as a warning, we're speaking about alpha versions. So the things you're seeing on the screen here today, they can and they will change. Some of the things that I will be pointing out as drawbacks or hurdles, or I'll be actually calling it headaches today, uh, it's very well possible that a couple of months from now these things are resolved and they're a lot easier. So this is a work in progress you're looking at. Uh, also, I, I'm coming from a neutral perspective. Um, typically, if you search the internet for these frameworks, you'll see presentations from the framework authors. Um, when you see the presentations from the framework authors, they will always say their own framework is awesome and things will always go smooth and easy. Uh, as a neutral standpoint, I want to see how uh, you look at the frameworks if you get them as a first impression. What do you run into if you're not hindered by too much background knowledge, how things work under the hood? So, that being said, let's look at some code. I have multiple things I want to show you in code. I always start with the Angular 1, then show how it translates to Angular 2, then show how it translates to uh, Aurelia. And I'm going to be a little bit agile. I, I have a certain amount of material. Um, I'll have a certain amount of time. I can add more. I can take some things out. I just want to get just enough to give you a feel for the framework. I will be doing simple, simple things, by the way, because before diving deeper into a framework, first of all, you want to know if the simple things work actually in a simple way or not. So I will not be talking about making custom components and all, all the sorts, uh, just the basics. Also, I'm not going to focus too much on how to set up um, the uh, boilerplate. I just took an Angular 1 seat, an Angular 2 seat, an Aurelia seat, and I'm just typing some code in the existing HTML, the existing uh, JS. So if we take, I, I think many people know Angular 1, right? So maybe not ever, all, all people are working with Angular 1, but I'm going to start with Angular 1. In Angular 1, you already see there that there's a message being written here. And you already see here that the scope dot message is hello from Angular, and then the version, which translates to hello Angular one four two. So that, that's pretty simple to start with. Let's see what we can do in Angular without even writing thing, more things in the JavaScript. Let's start with a form. Let's create an input and say ng model equals new item. And I'll be needing this later. Let's create an input type equals submit. And let's say value equals add. And then we'll type new item here. It's not, not necessarily useful, but it shows some of the power of Angular uh, originally. Save, go to my browser, refresh. If I type something here, you see the text in the button also changing without me writing any code to do so. If I would have done this in jQuery, it would have cost me a lot more work. So, a simple step. Let's see how this translates to Angular 2. Angular 2, uh, here also I have a simple HTML where I'll be adding code. Um, if I'm going to uh, transition to the, f to the file where the script lives, 
First, I have to again make a disclaimer. I had one sleepless night tonight because yesterday Douglas Crockford said that we should not be using classes. <sighs> and there is my class. Sorry. <laughs> But th th this is what, how the framework works. I'm sure that if I want to do this without classes, I can take the class out, I can do anything I like. Also, the code we're looking at here is TypeScript, not JavaScript, which is um, basically JavaScript changed in such a way that you can work with type-safe code. Another confession to make, when, when I'm writing script code for UI, I myself do not care that much about type safety. Many people apparently do, that's why TypeScript is gaining momentum in the community, but I think also some other people like me may not care that much about type safety. But if you look at the code, we see first an import of a component and a view, then we see two annotations for a component and a view, then we see the class called home and message, which is specifically declared as a string. But by the way, you don't have to do this. TypeScript also allows you to continue working with, uh, with decla without declaring this. And eventually I'll say what the message is. And as you expect, the message says here, hello from Angular 2.0. So let's do the same thing in um, Angular 2. Let's create a form. Let's say input. Um, Angular 2 also has an ng model. But if you look in the Angular 2 documentation, it's not the first thing they start talking about. So I will follow the direction that the documentation pushes me. If I have time left, I'll also show you the NGO model. Um, but the direction that the documentation pushes me is to do this. New item. Which looks fairly simple. Again, I'll be creating input type equals submit. And I'll try uh, naively to say add new item and see what happens. Save, go to Angular, enter, refresh. So here already in my new item, it tells me object HTML input element. So that, that's not really what I expected there. But this we can pretty simply fix by saying dot value. I refresh, now it's empty. If I type here, nothing happens. So th th this is already my first two headaches. First, it's not what I expect. Second, it doesn't really respond. So let's see if we can fix this. Let's say add an event here. And let's start simple, I just say click. And now you have to really watch it because the page will refresh. W watch what's happening quickly to the add button. Did you see that? Okay, so this is also not helpful. Let's try something else, do nothing Save, and let's add a do nothing controller that returns false to stop the event from bubbling further. Return false, okay. Try again, push add, and it says try again, and it stays on the page. But again, this is not what I want. Um, I want every keystroke to show up here. So what I eventually find out found out is that I don't have to put an event on the Submit button, but I have to put an event controller and the simplest thing that possibly works is to put a key up here. And now, if I refresh, this finally works. Okay, so a little bit more work than I expected, but I eventually I get it to work. Then I go to Aurelia. And in Aurelia, you first see that we have a template uh, which comes from the web templates. If I go to the JavaScript again, and again, I'm sorry, we see a class uh, where Angular 2 is very heavy on TypeScript. Aurelia takes the direction of adopting ES6 and they also say ES7. ES7 is a little bit preliminary to say that. What they actually do is they adopt some features which have been proposed for ES7 and they are kind of expecting that they'll make it in ES7. So they say we do ES6 and ES7. So here you see again message from Aurelia, and again in the HTML, you see hello from Aurelia. So let's start doing the same thing in Aurelia. We start with a form. We create an input. And then we say value.bind. 
equals new item. And then again, we create the submit. Now we say a value equals add, and then the slightly different notation, new item. And this works. Okay, so fairly simple in Aurelia. I go back to Angular 1 and I go add a list. You all know how this works, right? But again, there, I need to show Angular 1 as well, because that way you see um, one of the first differences. If I make a list in Angular 1, I need to put the ng repeat on the ul element itself. And the ng repeat um, does item in items. Item in items still, ES5 notation. And here I'll be creating a li, which contains the item. And obviously, I almost forget to create my list of items, so I'll be doing that as well. I can say here, scope dot items equals one, two, three. Let's keep it simple. So if I save this, refresh, I have one, two, three. So really simple in Angular 1, right? Let's go to Angular 2. In Angular 2, Let's do it the opposite way now. Let's also create a list of items. So I say items. And, uh, I, I can work in different ways as well, but I try to program the uh, code in the native language of the framework because that's usually how it works well and how is it's documented best. So I say string, uh, I make a string array. And then I can say here this dot items equals one to, and let's make a typo to check why it's important, three. It starts complaining because I typed three, which is a number, not a string, so it, it does help me a little bit, the type safety, but normally I don't make typos like this. So let's also see here the UL, build it up. UL, and like I said this time, my repetition is in the Lee element itself. And what I want to do here is an ng4, it's renamed, equals, and I'm going to say, I, I, if you already worked with Angular 2, you know that I'm going wrong here, but I expect this to be an item of items. The off notation is again coming from ES6. The item in items is ES5, where you get elements from an array. Items off, it's not just from an array, but also from an iterable, which allows you to uh, get also a different kinds of sources in code than just arrays. Um, and I'll be outputting my item and closing my li. So you can already expect as I said in my introduction, this is not going to work, but first of all, for a different reason than you expect. It tells me cannot bind ng4, since it isn't, this is big enough by the way, since it isn't a no property of the template element. That's, I think, not even correct English. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to measure framework here, I'm just observing. Um, so it doesn't know ng4. So what I need to do to get ng4 as part of my view, I need to do two things. First of all, I need to import ng4 from my Angular framework, but that, that's not it. I also need to pass it on directives to my view ng4. Save. So now you expect it to work. I'm afraid to tell you it still doesn't work. Uh, and funny enough, my error message still says can't bind ng4 since it isn't a no proper matching directive, etc., etc. Um, so this took me a while to figure out what, what I did wrong, but what I did wrong is the obvious mistake that I already pointed out. I need to say hash item of items. Let's check if it works first. And now it works. So what you do with hash item of items, hash items means I, uh, I'm introducing a local variable. So now let's go back to Aurelia and do the same thing in Aurelia. Let's start with the JavaScript. I say items equals, you know this by now, one, two, three, 
two, and three. Save. And let's write the UL. Also in Aurelia, the repetition is on the list element. And I can say repeat dot four equals item of items. Uh, and here I need to be careful to write the right thing. Item closely. And I go back to Aurelia already refreshed. I have my one, two, three in Aurelia. Okay, so it's a basic starting point. Now we want to be adding this item from the uh, input field to my list. So what we can do in Angular 1 is say scope.add equals function. I'm making a design choice here, value. I can also do this in a different way. And I can say scope.items.push value. And I can go back to my HTML view. And there I can start saying I do ng submit equals add new item. And for usability, I'll say new item equals empty again. And I can test this. Four, five, six. So that works. Now we're going to do the same thing in Angular 2. So let's first add an add button. Add, this is um, a method. I'm forgetting the value. Value dot, dot string. So we're doing type safely. And we say this dot items dot push value. Um, and then in my form, I can create an event handler submit equals, um, here I have to say add new item dot value and new item dot value equals empty. Now we test four, five, six, works perfectly fine without headaches. So then we go to Aurelia. In Aurelia, again, I need to, I'm doing the same thing over and over, add a value, and I say again, this.items.push value. And also in Aurelia, I can create an event handler. And what I can do here is I can say submit.trigger equals add new item, and I can say, oh, and I can say new item equals empty and test. So this already refreshed. Four, five, six. So that's easy. Um, if you want to add items, you also want to be able to remove items. So for removing items, we need another button. So let's again do it first in Angular 1. Sorry. I'll say a ng click equals remove index. You all know this notation x slash a, and then we also need a remove mm, function so scope dot remove equals function index, and then we do scope dot items dot splice idx and we only remove one element. So again this works pretty simple. We go do the same thing in Angular 2. So in Angular 2 we also say a click equals remove, and here's where I got in trouble. What should I type here? In Angular 1, it's dollar index. In Aurelia, it's dollar index. So let's guess it's dollar index. I'm giving a spoiler alert here already, but let's try what this does. Write the remove function method. Remove idx is a number. 
and I can say this dot items dot splice and again we remove only one so then we test this out now watch at the behavior here I'm going to remove three and what disappears what disappears is one so that's again not what I expected so maybe I did something wrong maybe it's not dollar index Pro possibly it's not dollar index because then it is empty let's try index just trying same behavior so what I need to do in Angular 2 to get my index here, I need to write hash index equals index. <laughs> so there's probably some logic behind it, but for me, from a user's perspective, it feels like doing things that are not really necessary just to get a local variable. Let's do the same thing in Aurelia, just, for the, to, to, just to be complete. So in Aurelia, I'll be typing again A, and now I get, need to get my click. I can say click.trigger. However, if I say click.trigger, it will create an event listener on every uh, remove button that's in the page. This is a list, so there will be potentially many uh, items in the page. So what I actually prefer is just to say click.delegate. Click.delegate, make sure that underwater you're doing event delegation, and a short summary, uh, in a nutshell, what event delegation is, is that you're not listening for the event on every element itself, but that you're listening for the event all the way in the root of your document. Uh, events will bubble up to the root of the element. Uh, in the root of the element, you will know the source of the element, so you can still see where the event came from, and it will be more efficient. So I'll be saying click.delegate equals remove dollar index. And here, by the way, Again, spoiler alert, here comes my first Angular uh, Aurelia headache. Because this is, first of all, correct. Then I say, remove IDX, this.items.splice IDX, comma one. However, this will not work. Nothing happens. So. If I look at my error messages, it will say remove is not a function. Well, why, why is remove not a function? I just typed my remove function um, in my code. So after, again, some research, what I found out is that what you need to do when you're in a sub-template because of the repeat, I need to say dollar parent dot remove. If you look at the documentation of Aurelia, it says so specifically in the documentation that this is for now, and the framework author kind of promises there that this dollar parent some time from now will not be necessary anymore. How much time from now, we don't know. Um, so now it does work. So how are we time-wise? How, how long do I still have? Because I, here, here I have a basic point where I can make a decision to continue with some more codes or to wrap it up. Another 10 minutes, okay. So um, there, there's a couple of interesting things we can uh, look into. First of all, uh, yesterday in the uh, excellent workshop of Magesh, um, like half of the audience here learned how to create your own Aurelia framework, and, uh, or sorry, your own Angular framework. And part of your creating your own Angular framework was a lot of dirty checking. So I want to take a quick look at dirty checking. And again, I'm going to make some mistakes on purpose just for the sake of, um, Illustration, but in this case, I'm going to make, make my mistake on purpose, not in Angular 2 and Aurelia, but I'm going to make my mistake on purpose in Angular 1, because that shows how Angular 1 under the hood is different from um, Angular 2 and Aurelia. And this is interesting. So actually, I need to remove this from what I did before, because that is what I will not be using. I'm going to, on purpose, instead of dollar timeout, I'm going to say set timeout function and I'm going to do three seconds so that you can see the change and, uh, first of all not see the change by the way and I'm going to say scope dot items equals and I'm going to create something else four and five 
You already know that if I do this, this is not going to work, but I'm going to show it anyway. Um, I reload the page. Now, after three seconds, you would expect the one, two, three to change into four and five. I don't even get an error, by the way, but it doesn't happen. Why not? The set timeout, um, let's say the simple words, Angular doesn't see that this is happening. So what you can do to fix this, either use dollar timeouts because there, there are things that are made easy for you, or you can say dollar scope dot dollar apply. And again, a function. And I can put this same code in my function. And I can try it again. And I wait two seconds. And I see my list changing in four and five. What's happening here is that if I anything I do in a scope dollar, dollar scope dollar apply, uh, Angular will afterwards check what happened with the variables in scope. And if something changed, which it will do by dirty checking, it will make sure the view gets updated. So the short way of writing this in um, Angular 1 is to use dollar timeouts, which I get here as injected as a dependency. And my dependency injection here is the naive way of dependency injection. Well, that's too much detail for here. And I can remove this again. And I can just say dollar timeout with the function, which otherwise works the same. And here, do the same thing. Angular will make it easy for me. Four or five. Let's do the same thing in Angular 2. In Angular 2, I can say set timeout. Um, and I can create a function. I can here use fat arrow notation just because I like it. This dot, uh, dot items equals four and five. I'll do it in three seconds. Save this. Update it. Wait three seconds. And it changed. So in Angular, I don't have to do any dollar apply anymore because the framework already picks this up. And the framework already picks this up because it uses native browser uh, features observable.observe instead of dirty checking. So just for the sake of completeness, I'll also show you that you can do the same thing in Angular, in Aurelia. Here again, I can do set timeout equals this dot items equals four and five and do it in three seconds. And here again, you'll see three seconds from now that it starts updating. So this is observable dot observe uh, at work uh, in the background. So I think now we're at a good time to wrap it up. I have even more things that you want to show, um, possibly, but we have limited amount of time. We do have a good feeling for the uh, framework right now. Um, so I think we can go back to our slides and look at the conclusion. Um, oh, sorry, I forget one thing. Before we look back at the slides, let's take, this is by the way, not representative at all, uh, and I have got varying results, but still I want to take a short look at how long my page takes to load and what happens here. So if I load my page in the standard Aurelia, sorry, Angular 1 seat, I get 14 requests, 1.1 megabytes, and it finishes in 247 seconds, a millisecond. If I do the same thing in Angular 2, It uses 19 requests, 2.1 megabyte, and it says it needed 888 milliseconds. So this is not yet a performance improvement, right? Um, but then again, this is far from representative, first of all, because there is nothing here um, minified and combined. Uh, so that, 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 that should help there, and this is just an alpha version. If I do the same thing in Aurelia, again, nothing minified, combined uh, to get together, concatenated. I get 82 requests, uh, 1.2 megabytes, and 780 milliseconds. So, so far, Aurelia seems slightly better than Angular, but in other of my tests, in slightly different setups, I get the quite opposite result. Um, but, but it gives a little bit of perspective. 
So let's count the number of headaches that we got during the typing of code. In Angular 1.4, I got zero headaches. Uh, I do have to say this is a mature framework which has been around for years. We know the framework, so we also know the quirks of the framework. So even if I have to do a dollar apply, I don't count it as an headache because we know Angular is like that. If I go into Angular 2.0, I got five headaches. Uh, first of all, I run into the local variable, which is different from my, what I expected. Uh, then the way I needed to add this event listener to get my uh, keystrokes to show up, uh, which again would be work different with ng model, but that will give you some other headache, by the way, but that, that, that's uh, separate. For ng4, I needed to first import it before I can use it, and I need to type ng4 in two places of my code extra, which is to me like sit-ups, and I got a very unreadable error again on the local variable. Uh, and for to get my index to show up, I had to type hash index equals index. Uh, by comparison, if I see my Aurelia number of headaches, it, it worked perfectly fine for me, except when I did this remove where I needed to type dollar $parent um, before my remove method to, to access it. Uh, but then there's one more thing we need to take a look at before we can draw a conclusion. And this is uh, how, how big is the community around the framework and how, um, how many people are working on the framework. One of my, I, I like Aurelia from the code that I can type in, type, and it looks promising. But one of my biggest issues with Aurelia, apart from the 82 requests that are made if I don't minify and concatenate my files, is this. If I look at, at in GitHub in uh, the repository and I look at the uh, contributors, and this is a little bit small, so I'll read for you what it says here, especially in the back. I have this guy, the, his account called Eisenberg Effect. This is Rob Eisenberg, who created 104 commits. And you see here it's the most. And the next biggest committer only has four commits. <laughs> and then I have a couple of guys with one, one commit. So this is a little bit of a one-man show. And again, it looks promising, but for me to advise my customers to move in this direction, I need to have some kind of feeling that there's traction in the market and that it's not just a one-man show. Um, Argument in favor for one-man show is that you don't lead, it doesn't lead to design by committee, because design by committee is the other worst thing that can happen uh, to technology. Um, but then people do need to start picking it up. So I only feel really comfortable about uh, Aurelia if it starts picking up in the community more. Otherwise, uh, I like it. Then if we compare this to um, Angular 2.0, um, not, not, nothing uh, really noteworthy. I just wanted to show you it's healthy. I have uh, one guy 339, one guy 231, one guy 222, 105, 103, 97. It looks like teamwork. So that's good. Um, I wanted to ask you as the audience, uh, by show of hands, what is your favorite? And you need to make a choice between, I'm going to continue with Angular 1 for a long time, um, I'll be checking out Angular 2 because I think we need to go to Angular 2. I'll be checking out Aurelia because I think we need to go to Aurelia. And my fourth option is I'll be checking out other options without mentioning what the other options are. So ma ma make a choice. I want to see uh, if we add up all the hands that we see, it should add up to 100%. So who is going to stay with Angular 1 for a long time? A couple of hands. Who, who will be checking out Angular 2? More. A few hands. Who will be checking out Aurelia? And who is going to explore their other options? <laughs> <laughs> OK. So we got the majority for people who want to explore other options. And it's a little bit sad end of a presentation here. But I, <laughs> but I have to admit that even my own conclusion, and you can see it from my presentation, obviously, but also I'm going to check out other options because I'm well, the whole Angular 2 thing, uh, for me, if I see that Google is moving Angular 2 towards TypeScript, and I do not believe in TypeScript, and they're heavily invested in TypeScript, um, for, for me, that's already a no by itself, um, apart from all the headaches that I got during coding. Uh, I do have to say in favor of Angular 2 team, they are saying we want community feedback on our current progressions. So the things that I noticed here while doing this, I can post as community feedback and tell them like, hey, this feels painful. And it's very well possible that a couple of months from now, these things that are painful in my presentation right now will not be painful anymore because there's a lot of traction in the community behind Angular 2. So let, let's see how things go. 
Um, Aurelia, like I said, um, I like it very much. I like the coding, but I have some concerns for using it on a professional basis. So it, if it picks up on the market, I'd love to use it. But honestly, I'm going to check out my other um, possibilities, and I'm going to pay a lot of attention this afternoon in the workshop from uh, Christian Lilly for React and Flux. So uh, we have time for questions. Microphone. So just, just to maintain the sanity of time, we'll take two questions um, from the room. So. So what was the main thing that made uh, Rob leave Angular 2? Next, what is the main difference? Sorry, what's the main difference between? Um, why Rob leave left uh, Angular 2.0? So there should be some big change in the initial plan and plan, and then later on they change something, right? Because yes. of that, Rob left the Angular 2.0 community, right? Yeah, so if I understand your question well, actually the qu question you're asking is why do they need to make such a big change? Why, and we also had Joe Dacats speaking about revolution versus evolution. Why do they not take a evolutionary approach and get the uh, Shadow DOM, web templates, uh, observable.observe, ESX, or for my part, even TypeScript to work with Angular 1? W why is everything different? And my, my answer is I don't know, because actually, if I see this, uh, and if I see also how easy Angular 1 still works, um, I would have suggested them to take the evolutionary approach, because that's usually better. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, was your question that, or were you asking why yeah. did Rob leave Angular team? Ah. What, what's the main difference between these two okay, so I think the main difference uh, between the two frameworks uh, right now is that um, Angular is very performance focused and is willing to take, but it's my opinion by the way, um, is willing to take some drawbacks in terms of usability uh, to gain performance. Uh, and Aurelia is very much usability focused uh, and it might it, on the long run even perform a little bit less but, but it's more usable. But this is what, from what I've seen from my observation, I might be wrong here. Um, if you see the blog posts from Rob Eisenberg why he's leaving the uh, Angular 2 project, basically what he writes is I do not feel that the direction of Angular is in the best interest of the Durango community. But that's a little bit of a political statement. I think he's also not, not, not um, using any dirty words against a community that he also respects. That's new ones. Very cool. Sorry, I have difficulty understanding you. I, uh, I felt completely moti motivated of about using Ember after the talk in the morning. And then after this talk, I felt like it was completely bashing Angular 2.0, so demotivated <laughs> there completely. <Okay. laughs> uh, so, I'm, uh, so as you said right now, you're saying Angular 2.0 is focusing a lot on performance improvements. Um, and um, by that way, we are losing a lot because the syntax change, it looks like a completely different framework. Um, how has the community reaction been in general about Angular 2.0 then? Yeah. Uh, if, because a lot of momentum, Angular Material for example is doing really well and I would like to use Angular Material at some point yes. too. So if you see the community reaction from what I've seen myself, I'd say that the reactions are mixed. There is a part of the community that actually likes this direction. And especially people who like um, type safety and who like TypeScript and who write a certain way of writing codes, they appreciate the direction where uh, Angular is going. Uh, also, uh, there's other um, advantages to Angular 2 as well in terms of testability that I haven't even touched here upon. Uh, other people are criticizing Angular 2 either for the way in the direction it's going or for the approach that they're taking towards migration. Um, so my, from what I see, I'd say it's mixed. I'm sorry, by the way, it's not my intention to bash your framework, it's my intention to give a first impression that I get when from a user perspective I'm using um, the framework and what I run into. And I want to give a good advice on where to go. Great. I think we can, we can also take up similar questions and others as part of the panel discussion later. Adrian, thank you so much. We'll let you go off the stage if you say one more Hindi word apart from the two that you told us in the morning. Sorry, can you please repeat? One more Hindi word that you know of before you get off the stage, please. Hanji. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much.